Twitter remains President Trump's preferred platform to vent frustrations. This week's targets, the NFL, a high-ranking Republican senator, and claims of fake news. They speak to, and in some cases fuel, debates that divide the country. More on that now with Corrine Jean-Pierre. She's a senior advisor to MoveOn.org and a contributing editor to Bustle, an online women's magazine, and a veteran of the Obama administration. And Matt Schlapp. He's the chairman of the American Conservative Union and the former White House political director under President George W. Bush. Welcome back to both of you. So I was going to start with the exchange of insults over the last few days between the president, Senator Bob Corker, but in the last few days, uh, Matt, the president seems to have found somebody else uh, to single out, and that's NBC News, because right. they've reported in the last day or so that this summer uh, the president said he wanted to dramatically increase the U.S. nuclear arsenal uh, tenfold. The president says that's not true. He's been backed up by the defense secretary, uh, James Mattis. Now the president is saying he wants to look at NBC's license. Is this a, a, a good move for the president to be making? Well, I don't think it's, a, it's necessarily a great week for NBC. They didn't go with the Harvey Weinstein story. They decided to take a pass. And then the, this story that Donald Trump went to, uh, went to the Department of State or pe the Pentagon and had a wide-ranging meeting with uh, foreign policy advisors and asked very basic questions about our nuclear arsenal and the use of our nu nuclear arsenal. The contents of that meeting, or someone's what they thought they heard, gets leaked, and a news outlet goes running with the fact that the president wanted to increase our nuclear arsenal tenfold. This is kind of, this is when I think people get frustrated with the news media. I think a president should be able to sit with his foreign policy advisors and ask all kinds of questions in confidence and get direction from them. And I don't think those very same career foreign service or career military people should leak those conversations. It, it breaches their duty. It's against the law to try to weaken this president. I think it's a big mistake. The president was left with a terrible problem in North Korea and in Iran. He's right. got very few good choices, and he's trying to figure out what he can do. Is this more about leaks than uh, Kareen and the, and the media fake news? Look, I think we should be concerned that someone at a, such a high level in the administration is leaking this, but we have to ask, why is that? Why are they so uncomfortable that they have to leak these really interesting tactical um, decisions that the president's going to make. It's because they are concerned about the president's behavior, about what, how, how far he wants to take, how aggressive he is, how bombastic he is. So basically, they're showing us what we see him talking about on Twitter. He's actually seriously talking about it, you know, at the Resolute desk or in the Oval Office or in these meetings. But the thing about this is that this is the type of dictatorship authoritarian regime that we're seeing from this president. He has to understand... John Kelly actually needs to slap the Constitution on his desk and tell him to read it because he clearly has not read it. You cannot get rid of the free press. It's part of our democracy. This is what our country is about. And these are the things that he has continued to do. This is not the first time that we hear him talk about the Judy, press as I, fake news. Can I just go on this question about what the president inherited? I didn't read uh, the, 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 the president's comments, or I didn't take the president's comments that somehow he wants to chill the First Amendment. I think what he's saying to members of the press is that just because you have a source, and you're a respected journalist, just because you have a source, and a source is telling you a story, it doesn't mean that the source is right. And it's the job of the journalist to ferret that out and to only print what they can use with their best judgment to be accurate. And I think when it comes to this question about nuclear weapons in a nuclearized world, the president is in a terrible position where we're going to have uh, North Korea with the ability to strike Hawaii, strike Japan, strike California. What are we going to do? There's a more serious policy question here than just people's dislike with how Donald Trump but talks. He's, but he, how, he's the president. We have to listen to how Donald he is Trump's the president. right. And he's incredibly <laughs> dangerous in the, in the rhetoric that he uses. Well, he created the situation for himself. We're not no, out no, no. here. No, no, no. He inherited, he inherited well, these no, two no, nuclear no. situations. I'm not saying that he Let, didn't, but his behavior is not helpful. Sorry. I want to bring up what, as I said, I was going to mention to begin with, and that was the comments of 
the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Bob Corker. He's announced he's not running for re-election, but he's in a pretty significant position in the Congress. Yeah. He said in the last few days uh, that the uh, that the only thing separating the country from chaos is are the people around the president, yeah. Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State, White House Chief of Staff. He went on to tell the New York Times uh, that the president's rhetoric could possibly lead to something like World War III. I mean, this is not a What's, light what could, statement. What could possibly lead to World War III is the idea that Bob Corker and his friends thought it was okay to allow Iran to get a nuclear weapon and to not force that agreement to go through the Senate as a treaty where it would have had a tougher time becoming the law of the land. That is what the president has inherited. And so I think Bob Corker is trying to rewrite history to make it seem like the president is being reckless. He is he is he has inherited a absolutely terrifying situation with a nuclearized Iran soon to be and a nuclearized North Korea. It's all of these folks who have been around for the last decade who didn't take the steps previously to prevent this problem that we have today. Is that, are we just looking at it the wrong way? No, we... I, I, I think we're looking at it exactly the way it is. One week you have dotard, the other week you have moron, now you have unfit from the Foreign Relations Committee chair. That is a big deal. We have to remember, he's not, Corker's not running for re-election anymore. He because feels free. Because he wouldn't free. win. He, because he wouldn't win well, on a let primary. Let me finish, let me finish my point here, Matt, because he, he is free to say what he believes. He is, like he said, he is the chair of the Foreign Relations Committee. He knows exactly what what's going on. And the problem with Donald Trump is that he's not a used to people kidding back. And Corker gave him a knockout punch. And, and, and the and, voters of Tennessee have given Bob Corker a knockout punch. If you look at all the polls, he would have gone down in flames in a primary. People are tired of people who stand in the way of the Trump Corker, agenda. Corker, uh, you know this better than I do. This is not co the type of man he is, Oh, Bob I'm not Corker. so sure of that at all. Well, that's no. what people say. That's what Republicans no. are saying. I don't know him. The that's words what wouldn't I mean. come out of his mouth. It just didn't reflect I think he believes, another, I think he wants to save this country. There's another interview that was done uh, that, uh, era, that ran today in the Washington Post. Tom Barrack, who's a longtime yeah. friend of the president's, Matt, who the president, we are told, he and the president speak all the time, who said that he has been concerned, shocked, he put it, by some of the president's tweets and hopes that the president will tone it down in effect. Yeah, I think he said something to the effect that the president uh, could communicate better, he's better than this. You know, I read the story. I didn't take it as the, this uh, an attack by the president's close personal friend. I took it as some coaching uh, in, a, in an article about what Tom Barrick would like to see the president do better. Does he have a point? Sure, absolutely. I mean, I think a lot of people who like and respect the president um, there's a tweet here or a comment there where it leaves them saying, I, don't, I wish he would have said it differently. And I think a lot of them try to talk through the, through the media to him. I think that shows that he has friends that give him diverse viewpoints and, and direction. I think it's good. 15 seconds. Well, it's fascinating that his friends have to go to the press in order to connect with Donald Trump because they know Donald Trump is going to listen and he hear what he has television. to say. Yeah, he does. But I think that's kind of weird that your friends have to do that. But this is nothing surprising. This is all very predictable. This is who Donald Trump is. I don't know why his friends are surprised. So much to cover today. <laughs> we didn't even get to uh, Steve Bannon uh, trying to run against, uh, get some people to run against the Senate. But that's okay. That story's going to continue. Waging, it'll continue. <laughs> Oh, yeah. well, they have Roy <laughs> Moore because of Steve Bannon. <laughs> Corinne Jean-Pierre, Matt Schlapp. Thank you both. Thank you both. Appreciate Thank it. you.